let's be honest with each other. You looked at the length of this video and thought, are they crazy? I don't have the time for this. It's okay. I say the same thing all the time. Most of the time, I'm too lazy to even move my thumb and turn on the sound. But Metropolitan Hilarion really, really needs your help. And I know how much you love him, so if you don't have the time to watch this, here is the ending. All of the information is on our website. Metropolitan Hilarion needs 100 people to donate $30 a month to save a monastery. Thank you so much. God bless you. Goodbye. I don't know how people do that on television, but it's crazy. This is pretty much what we're used to. Next time you watch TV or commercials, look at how much information people are trying to cram at you in 30 seconds. This is the world we live in. We have no more time. Time hasn't gone anywhere. We're just focused on all the wrong things. Боже, очисти нас грешных, помилуй нас. Боже, очисти нас грешных, помилуй нас. Без числа Господи согрешили, прости нас грешных. До нас здесь только олени ходили. Ну а теперь наша очередь. Смотрите. Ever since he was a little boy, Metropolitan Hilarion wanted to spend time alone with God in the forest. As a child, that's what I did. I went into the woods and had a t secret church all to myself. Why is it so important for you to spend time in the forest? Well, I remember from being a boy uh, to uh, look at the stars at night or to walk through the forest, a, a forest uh, looking for mushrooms with my mother. And uh, it's just the beauty of nature. We see God's uh, fingerprints and his uh, footsteps in, in nature in the forest. So um, we, by uh, being quiet and seeing this beauty and how God created everything, it instills you in, in you um, love for God and praise for God in your, in your heart. So I think that's why it's important to go for walks in force. Так солнце всходит, вот красота какая. Да, слава тебе, показавшим нам свет. In 2015, Metropolitan Hilarion visited an abandoned church and cemetery deep in the Pine Barrens of South Jersey. He fell in love with the place. He felt something here, something sacred, something special. And that's when he knew that he had to bring this parish back to life as a monastery. This is a place where I love to come to uh, retreat from the world for a period of time, to pray, to be quiet, to reflect, to read spiritual literature, to attend the services and pray. Отойдите, чуждые странники, 
помыслы и слова. Пусть душа живет в празднике одиночества. There are many different reasons why Vladika comes here, but all of those reasons have one thing in common. They are quiet examples for you and me about what it means to be a servant. Metropolitan Hilarion's entire life is dedicated to serving Christ and his holy church. That's why the question of retirement doesn't even cross his mind. Listen carefully to Vladika's humble response to the question about retirement. This is what it means to be a servant. Well, uh, everything is in God's hands in our life. So I don't intend to, uh, to be uh, a very, uh, what's the word, uh, selfish and uh, retired just because I don't feel like working in the church. But if God says you have to because of illness or other uh, state of mind of a person and so on, uh, I would retire only for those reasons. But it's important that I have a place also to go and spend a quiet time. Почему Владыка ездит в скид? Да потому что здесь тишина. Особенно после Нью-Йорка, когда шум, когда вот это все мегаполис. И Владыка сюда приезжает, он первое, что делает, вот этот чистый воздух. Он его вдыхает полной грудью, наслаждается вот этой тишиной. Вот, вот и весь ответ. I come there to spend time for myself as uh, taking the example of uh, saints who were in monasteries surrounded by deserts or by forests. They uh, longed to be alone with God in prayer. They would go into the desert. We can't do that nowadays, but just to go through a forest to uh, spend time alone with God glorifying God who is wondrous in his creation, uh, contemplating about God and about our own life. When they started building the skeet, there was no need to build a new church. All they had to do was restore an existing church that was closed for many years. But this was not as easy as you might think. Well, originally the skeet was a parish which has an important cemetery and is situated in a beautiful wooded area. Храм был закрыт 21 год. Хотелось плакать от того, что такая красота и находится в таком небрежении, в таком поругании. Просто брошен, просто оставлен на произвол судьбы. As it stood in a forlorn state, it lacked life. Когда я начал оставаться здесь с ночевкой, я обратил внимание, что каждую ночь практически на кладбище приезжают наркоманы. The property was in such bad shape that at one point even Father Tikhon started to wonder why Vladika chose this place for a spiritual retreat. Я не понимаю, почему Владыка выбрал это место, потому что действительно здесь был полный развал. Благан, наркоманы, грязь, но Мне кажется, что Владыка вперед в будущее зрел, и он видел потенциал этого места. Он видел, что вот только взяться, и это место, оно само преобразится. And I assigned uh, my assistant, now the abbot, to uh, begin to transform 
this uh, beautiful uh, church and its uh, surrounding area into a monastic uh, entity. Мы приезжали вместе с Владыкой, трудились вместе с ним вдвоем. Я на улице, он что-то в храме протирает икон от десятилетней копоти. И мы с Владыкой ночевали там, вот в подвале храма, на обычных раскладушках. Приходилось мыться в лесу с ведерком, какое-то ставить такую, как палатку, принимать таким образом, значит, какие-то процедуры такие. Imagine the first hierarch of the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia slept in a basement on a cot. There were no opulent uh, accommodations for him. Uh, Father, people might say that we're, we're being sensationalist here. Is that uh, maybe? I I wouldn't necessarily define that as a sensationalist, but rather a realist. And it's a statement of a monastic struggle. We say that Metropolitan Hilarion is helping build the monastery. We understand that he's 71 years old and he's not able to build the monastery physically. So who's the one who's actually doing all the work here? Basically, it's Father Tikhon himself. 90%, 98% Father Tikhon himself. He was there from early morning till, till it gets dark. I'm afraid for his... Uh, for his physical health, and uh, I don't want him to burn out. The other thing that's so amazing to me is not how much work he does, but how much work he does in such little time. This isn't his full-time job. He's the Metropolitan's personal assistant, so he's constantly traveling. Still, the real question is, where, where is the income coming from? Because right now it's just, all I see is two monks. Um, they're working very hard, they're praying very hard, but who's paying the bills? The expense has fallen on the shoulders of one man, Father Tikhon. Isn't that kind of what a monk is supposed to do? That notwithstanding, the expenses are greater than the modest stipend that Father Tikhon receives. So... Uh, example you hear today in society, people have minimum wage jobs. And yet if you try to maintain a car, run a household, it's, it's impossible. You're always behind. Does Father Tsikha never complain? Never. That... Never. Never? He, uh, never. It is constantly prayer and work and the hermitage. This is all, if anyone has spent time with him, this is all he talks about, is prayer and work and the hermitage. But we still need that little bit of extra support. He's the only uh, stable source of income. We need your help because the uh, hermitage is uh, struggling to survive financially. What your gift will allow them to do is to prepare the way for new monks. Because then this will become truly a full-time monastery. Because the reality is that the Skith is a part-time monastery right now. If Vladika and Father Tsikhan are not there, the doors are locked. This is the amazing quality of our first hierarch and the abbot of this hermitage in that they're not shutting the doors, they're opening the doors. 
в этом э, кроется тайна самого вот этого места. Это не место просто уединения, где владыка или я приезжаем, никого не видим, прячемся от мира. I think Vladika would like all of us to have an opportunity to come and just uh, experience the silence and fall in love with the silence that our Metropolitan loves. And as generous as our Metropolitan is with his offer to come and visit the Hermitage, it won't be possible if you don't help. So with the assistance that you can help provide to the Skeet, it will free up Vladika Metropolitan and Father Tikhon. To do what exactly? That's what this all comes down to. You already understand that Vladika needs 100 people to give $30 a month, one-time donation. We got all that out of the way. What I would like to share with you is what will happen in the Skeet thanks to you. Because you're not just going to sign up to become a monthly donor. You are going to help Vladika train an entire generation of monks. Sounds sensational. Sounds crazy. What would I know about training monks? Nothing. Vladika, how do you train a monk? We put in a little bit of our efforts and God grants us much more of His grace. Uh, it's a synergy that takes place and a person gradually in the course of his years, uh, of his lifetime, uh, hopefully becomes better and enlightened and sanctified uh, by the grace of the Holy Spirit. But who actually does the training? Is it a spiritual father? Is it the abbot? Is it just elder monks? Um, who tells him how to do these things? Well, in the first instance, probably the spiritual father, but also the, the abbot. Uh, also, the other monks are examples uh, that, that can be looked up to. Uh, so the spiritual father is the one that gives the, the rule, so to speak, to follow. And uh, here's his confessions. And that's the work, working together and observing the uh, spiritual life of other monks. Пресвятая Богородице, Отче, спаси бед, спаси, и всякие ныне нужды рабы Твоя. While we were filming, I noticed a lot of things that were a little odd at first. Um, things that maybe didn't make sense. Originally, I thought that you were the abbot of the monastery, and then I noticed that Father Tikhon is the abbot. So what does that make you? Appointing him the abbot of the Skeet means that uh, I'm like a brother of the monastery. There was, uh, I believe, an expression once in Latin that said, uh, uh, not to be served, but to serve. His exemplification of this is when he comes to the skeet. Здесь Владыка, он, он просто человек. Вот он приезжает, он не обременен каким-то вот своим, своим вот этим высоким, ответственным церковным послушанием. Он себя реализует как монах, как иначе. Можете те, которые... 
которые вот мягенькие, это мои. Да, вот правильно. Нам приезжают и удивляются, вот как это так бывает. Говорят, мы видим владыку вот в величественных храмах, а здесь в обычном подрясничке, поясок из веревочки, и владыка что-то поливает, какие-то цветочки, ухаживает за какой-то травкой, за кустиками, читает книгу. Приезжали на послушание работники, помогали нам. Вот. А владыка, владыка имел послушание на кухне. Значит, у нас салат, суп, что еще? Салат, э, картошка. А, что еще? А, скалопс. Они сморачивают еще. А вы как скалопс будете готовить? Просто... Жарить. Возвращаемся после послушания, уставшие, хочется покушать, и Ладыка говорит, проходите, пожалуйста, все готово, давайте помолимся. Ладыка очень вкусно. Салфеток очень вкусно, спасибо. Хочется такому человеку поклониться низко в ноги, потому что он действительно отец. Он действительно, вот знаете, образ крутости и правила веры. The foundation of the monastery that is being built is built on prayer. This is what Father Tikhon once told me when I went to the skeet. He said, here we pray. Потому что мы здесь не просто стены восстанавливаем, чтобы взор человека радовать. Нет, мы здесь налаживаем прежде всего жизнь молитвы, жизнь монашеского послушания, аскеза. When the Metropolitan is in residence at the Hermitage with Father Tikhon, he serves not as first hierarch, he serves as a higher monk. Tell me about that, because we, there's footage there of Vladika serving like a, like a simple priest. Does that happen regularly? At the Hermitage, yes. I just want to clarify for our audience that it's not that Vladika only serves as a simple hire monk when he's there. This is usually during the week when it's just the two of them. Um, but the fact remains that the parts that he serves, let's say during a compline, these are things that traditionally, usually the junior priest does. Uh, certainly not a bishop, especially not a metropolitan. At first you might not notice anything strange, but Take a look at the footage that, that we'll show you right now. This was actually on Vladika's birthday. You'll notice for the small entrance that he doesn't even come out with the traditional candle stands. And then for uh, the part Holy God, Holy Mighty, when he comes out, um, he just blesses and that's it. And it's so simple. 
Very often, the metropolitan becomes the the salomchik, essentially. Uh, he reads the epistle. He reads the psalms. He leads kleros, and Father Tikon serves. Удивляется народ, как это вот что за батюшка слушает, если на клеросе у него регентует митрополит. Что это за батюшка такой тогда? Very often for these uh, memorial services, the Metropolitan will serve and offer his own responses. And nobody knows this, he just does it quietly. No, it's, it's very quiet. And uh, for people who have known the Metropolitan for a good number of years, this is very typical of our Metropolitan. It's uh, an expression of his, his amazing humility. Опыт жизни чаще всего человека подталкивает на какое-то высокомерное такое отношение. И вот хорошо, что у нас есть такие люди, настоящие монахи, настоящие вот молитвенники, как владыка, которые немножко наш путь человеческий выправляют. Давай за мной, как бы, да, образно говоря. Давай не как вот все идут вот по этой широкой стезе, а давай как церковь нас Христова учит. Ну, давай вот за Господом, следом за Евангелием, путем такого вот молитвенного подвига. You know, in fundraising, they tell us that urgency is one of the most important things. Why would I give? Why would I choose to give to the, to the hermitage? They teach us that we have to tell you how your gift is so uh, urgently needed right now. Well, I, I know that every day I get close to, to my end. For Orthodox Christians and for Vladika, the greatest sense of urgency is death. Uh, I don't want to think of the, the, the pallor of death, so to speak. I'm not trying to scare you. But it's a reality of life. I have daughters, I don't have a great business. And what will happen when I die? And uh, what I'm trying to get you to understand is what Vladika is doing here. Here I take incredible comfort knowing that my contribution to the Hermitage will almost guarantee someone will pray for my soul. By spending all this time in a cemetery, he is constantly thinking about death. Well, first of all, we pray for the departed in the Orthodox faith. We pray that God will uh, grant them a place in his mansions, in the kingdom of heaven, and uh, praying for the dead is an important part of our life. Uh, second, uh, it reminds us of our own death, our future death, and we should always prepare ourselves for uh, departing this life and having uh, repented and having uh, uh, washed away our, our sins so that we can be as clean as prepared as much as we can be. Здесь не обычные люди лежат, здесь православные христиане. Те люди, которые возжелали упокоиться в тени церковных куполов, на насвященной благодатной земле, зная, что пройдет время, и не год, и не два, может быть, сто, двести лет, а имена их будут звучать за упокойных молитвах. Мимо батюшка пройдет, воздохнет, помолится, Локосины, Петр Андреевич, Елизавета Ивановна. Вот а, они были одними из первых прихожан, которые здесь на Новой Кубани. И вот это интересно, что людей уже нету. Уже нету тех людей, которые их помнили. А Церковь Христова помнит их. И потому поем им вечная память, 
что память о них в церкви сохраняется. Нигде больше человек никогда о себе не оставит такой памяти, как в церкви Христовой. I'm not a hero. I'm I'm no one special. I'm very insignificant. But at the skeet, to Father Tikon, to the Metropolitan, to the monks that come after them, they will pray for me. And through their prayers, as we say in church, my memory will be eternal thanks to their prayers. This is important for me. Are you going to be buried here at the skeet, or can you see yourself being buried here? Yeah, I could see myself being buried there in the skeet, especially if uh, I live in a retirement there, which would uh, be according to God's will. As he gets older, he wants the reassurance that he has helped establish this hermitage and that there are people that will will take up the call and continue its work with your help this is what will ensure the future because you just saw the future it's already happening at the skeet when you help Vladika it's just going to multiply more monks more prayers more humility more silence У меня мечта велия, с каждым днем сильней. Сделаю себе я келью и закрою в ней. Ржавый гость удержит мантию. Поручи, помолюсь. 